Hello everyone. How are you all? Welcome back to the class, guys. I hope you all are doing really great. And now we are going to start our ancient history prelims crash course 2024. As I have promised you guys that I am going to give you this subject on your tips. But this subject is going to be on your tips only and only when you are giving your 100% attention to the also, I am assuming that you have seen my orientation class of this ancient history on YouTube where I have told you that UPSC is frequently asking under certain themes, guys. Themes broadly, I have told you that they are asking it in a timeline sense, side based question, personalities, terminologies, both in ancient history and medieval history. Also, you are analyzing that by seeing the PYQs and PYQs uh, lecture or PYQs uh, video is also on YouTube. You must check it parallelly. Not in one go you complete the PYQ. Also, I'm, I'll be discussing PYQs here also, but uh, see that particular video, right? So you must be seeing that ancient history and medieval history right now are being frequently asked. So the cost benefit which earlier used to be less, now it has gone up, right? So we'll not be leaving any part of the syllabus, be it ancient history, medieval history or any other part, guys. We should not leave it. We should be preparing it in a warlike manner, right? Without wasting any single second, let us start our lecture number one that is about prehistoric. Now, before understanding or before uh, going into prehistoric times, let us understand first of all that from where we have to start our history. If I ask you this question that from where you will start history, what you will say? This is very important to develop this timeline sense. For a certain time, you will be also agreeing that if I am saying that what was happening in 8th century AD. 8th century AD what was happening, 6th century BC what was happening. If I ask you 5th century BC what was happening, like politically what was happening if you can tell me. So you will not be able, 90% of the student will not be able to think very fast. And this confusion you must also be facing. That sir with timeline we are not getting what was going on. It takes a lot of time. Right, but when you are seeing the UPSC questions, how they are asking, they are asking in a timeline way only. That who are the, which of the following dynasties were ruling in 8th century AD or 8th century BC. Like this they are asking. That means within seconds you have to know that what was ha happening in that time period. Timeline sense important, I have already told you also, but again I am telling you. So from where you will start this history guys? Somebody of you will be saying that history will be studying from ancient history. In ancient history you will be studying from Paleolithic. Right, that, but Paleolithic is just recent, 20 lakh BC. If I ask you that when the Earth's formation has been taken place, this is a crash course, be with me guys. I'll be telling you very, in a very elaborative manner, in a very cruxful manner that you will be getting a, a sense of it, right? So when the Earth has been formed, if I ask you, it was 4.5 billion years. Today is, Earth is in the condition of 2023, that is 21st century AD. So you must be understanding that this whole history also has also been passed. But do we have to study this whole history in this manner? No. We only start understanding history from the Holocene period. What is Holocene period? You will be understanding. But this whole history from the formation of Earth till present over here is divided into certain scale. And that scale we call it as geological times. Right, and this geological time scale is your concept of geography, guys. In geography, you study this, but I am teaching you GTS, this geological time scale from the historical perspective because timeline is very important. So you are seeing that Earth has been formed formed 4.5 billion years ago, and since that, certain geological processes are taking place. In between, you will be seeing that several species of humans you will be seeing, dinosaur species you will be seeing, and right now we are in the condition of 2020. Right. Now this geological time scale has divided it into certain units that we have certain major chunks. This whole period will be divided into certain major chunks, means units, larger units. So these larger units are known as this you should know guys, Eon. This is the largest unit, Eon, Eon, Eon. So this whole history from 4.5 billion years ago to 2023 is being divided into certain eons. What are the eons? I'll be telling you. But you have to know this. At least you should be in a position to tell me if I ask you that in which eon you are living in. You should be in a position to tell me already. Already in the foundation batch students uh, must be knowing it. 
those who are my foundation batch students or earlier batch students they must be knowing it but those who are new because i am teaching from the perspective that certain students have like seen me or studying from me for the first time so you will be seeing history from a different perspective guys now right so all this 4.5 billion years ago to 2023 it is divided into certain eon this is a larger chunk right and then every <coughs> Every eon will be having certain smaller chunks, okay, like this. They are covering short, short periods. Like this, you will be seeing that eons are having your, or eons are divided into now eras. Okay, I am not saying you to remember everything. No, it is not possible. Also, or. I'll be not leaving this burden on you. I'll be making sure that you yourself learn in this class only. So, but you should be in a position to tell me that you are living in which era. You are from which era. You are from which eon. Right. And then again, these eras are having certain, uh, you can say, this is divided into certain smaller units. And these are your periods. Every era is having certain periods. I'm not concerned about all eras i am concerned about only my era so i'll be knowing about my periods right that in, in this era i am living in this period and all these periods are divided into certain epochs i hope you are understanding in state pieces and all in prelims also they can ask you right this is your epochs Now these are just a terminology. What is epoch? You don't have to go into the genealogy of this word. Epoch means no. This is a unit of geological time scale which is denoting certain time period. And we should be in a position to tell uh, tell you should be in a position to tell me that or tell not me, but you should have an understanding as a learned citizen, as a learned aspirant. You should be knowing this that in which epoch you are living in, and you must all be knowing that because every history book start from Holocene epoch, right? They will be saying that Holocene period, we are, uh, Holocene epoch is going. So this everyone knows. But do anyone know that which in which eon we are living in, in which era we are living in, in which period we are living in? This you should be knowing. So ultimately you are understanding that we have or they can easily ask you like this guys. Eon, A, B, chronologically they can ask you. Biggest as a descending order or ascending order they can ask you. Eon, era, period epoch and then you will see certain ages like stone age right stone age ancient age you are seeing stone age then iron age you will be seeing like this then epoch will be divided into it then we will be developing into our stone age paleolithic age mesolithic then we will be understanding right but like this they can ask easily shuffle they will be shuffling it over here okay so you should be in a position to understand it very clearly now you should be knowing that how many how many eons we are having? Deho, I am telling you, but you should not be rectifying every eon, guys. But at least you should be knowing that in which eon we are living in. So eons are basically Hadean. Archean. Hadean, Archean, Proterozoic. And we are living in a Panerozoic era. Paneros eon. Panero. Understanding. So that what do you mean by that? That means broad geologists have divided this entire history of Earth from 4.5 billion years ago to 2023 into this particular greatest chunk, greater unit that is eons. And we are living in this Phanerozoic eon. I am concerned with this Phanerozoic eon. Now Phanerozoic, every eon is having certain eras. I don't care about them. But I am caring about my Phanerozoic eon. That I should be knowing that how many eras we are having under Phanerozoic. This you should be knowing guys. That in which eon we are living in. And then we are coming with eras. And you will be understanding that there are in Phanerozoic Eon, there are three eras that is Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. 
है ना तो वी आर लिविंग इन विच एरा स्कीनोजोइक एरा You must be understanding that there is difference between them. Hadean, for example, Hadean will be going on to two billion years ago. No need to remember this. Two billion years ago, as you are proceeding, is proceeding in time. One billion year ago, Archean period. Not exactly. These are uh, these figures are right. But I'm what I'm trying to tell you, as the time is moving ahead, we are entering into different eras based upon different different features, findings which we don't have to go upon. Like fossil somewhere we are uh, in Hadean, we will be finding no fossils. In Archean, we will be finding fossils. In Proterozoic, you will be getting some dinosaur events also. But you don't have to understand it from that perspective, guys. In geography, you will be seeing smaller things, not in detail too. They will never be asking you in detail information about this topic. But at least from the historical point of view, you should be knowing that sir, we are from Phanerozoic era eon, and we are in Cenozoic era. Again, every era is having certain period, as I have told you. But we are concerned only about Cenozoic era. Cenozoic era. you will be finding again there are three periods which are going on and if i am if i'll be asking you that we are from which period now this is also written history in books starts from here guys and this is also written over there we are basically from not we are basically from but first of all you know that cenozoic is divided into paleogene paleogene neogene at your quaternary period now you must all be agreeing that this particular quaternary period is written on in our books guys and from here history is being started quaternary period and now you will be seeing that this quaternary period or every period is divided into certain epochs but i am only concerned with again i am only concerned with my quaternary period and you will be seeing that this quaternary period is divided into certain epochs that is two epochs and over here you will be finding my epoch and we are living in what epoch or how many epochs are there two and what is the name of those epochs you will be seeing that we have pleistocene and your holocene guys holocene you must have all heard holocene and one more in current affairs you must be reading that scientist or geologist are trying to give one more entry to one more epoch they are saying that anthropocene should also be one epoch we should introduce because of the human entrance because of the power plants and all there has been alteration in climate guys there has been alteration in the lifestyle so you should include anthropocene but it is not accepted so there is no epoch like anthropocene it is just suggestive right we have not taken it as it is right So right now we have only two epochs, and we are living in this Holocene period. And now time period starts, guys. From here only you should be focusing upon timeline. <laughs> so this Holocene start from ten thousand years ago, or we call it ten thousand BC to present time. You are living in Holocene epoch. You are living in Quaternary period. You are living in Cenozoic period. You are living in Phanerozoic. Eon. Till now question has not come. but if question will be coming from geological time scale i am damn sure that you will be able to attempt this question rightly in any form because more than this depth they will not be asking people will not be remembering until now how you have studied this geological time scale guys like this you must have seen in your <coughs> geography textbook and you must be feeling tough also that i are how we should be remembering it we we'll, we are not able to understand it right and you must have always left it if you will be true to yourself guys but now you realize that i have made you learn all this guys right so in which eon we are phanerozoic in which era we are cenozoic in which period we are quaternary in which epoch we are holocene it is up to you if you want to learn all other periods or not i would recommend i would say my students ignore this ignore this that's why i am here as your mentor because i know what to reject and what not to reject right so somewhere i'll be saying yeah don't even see through that so don't see guys don't waste your unnecessary time you will be knowledgeable about this geological time scale i am again telling you you have to study selectively right so you are getting adept with it that okay this much you should be knowing <laughs> okay understand that there are four eons hadean archean proterozoic phanerozoic era paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic period paleogene neogene quaternary in period quaternary we are going pleistocene holocene 
and now we'll be opening up prehistoric times guys the whole ancient history will be coming in your holocene epoch understanding or not i could have easily told you in this particular ppt only by marking guys i hope you are appreciating my efforts too i, I can be easily telling you like eon sinoze quaternary but i am making you understand it right those people who have worked hard initially they must be feeling very easy now by this method right so lastly we will be moving on now from geological time scale to prehistoric times because now i am knowing that okay my i am in eon phanerozoic i am in which era uh, i am in cenozoic era i am in which period quaternary i am in which uh, epoch holocene and now we will be opening certain ages stone age iron age mahajanpad age mauryan age gupta age harsha age right so now we will be opening history guys and we will be starting our prehistoric times now prehistoric times is not a very important from the <coughs> prelims perspective you must also have seen no questions are coming from prehistoric times so once in 10 years you you will be seeing one question has come and this is this guys 2021 i am telling you a lot of, as i have already told you a lot of students a lot of teachers were not knowing that this can be solved on the basis of your prehistoric times knowledge but a lot of students leave it i am telling you from prehistoric times from indus valley civilization sites are very important you only have to know sites for example if i am telling you that where is or daujali hading this burzon ikli hal hallur mehargad your adamgad birbhanpur <coughs> langanj maski and your himbetka if i ask you to separate the neolithic sites from paleolithic sites and mesolithic sites can you pick up the sites right now those who are my students of foundation badge of uh, previous year crash course they will be easily picking it out uh, finding the odd one out or they will be arranging it under certain hats but new students must be feeling difficult guys new students must be feeling difficult to arrange it and this is the problem you must be facing also if this would have been live you must have uh, you must have told me that sir this is the problem we are facing that there are a lot of site which are overlapping too right but we will be solving i'll be solving your problem guys this problem but you understand this question that they are asking burso chandra ketugad ganeshwar in this particular part you must have understood if you have read for 2021 and if you have given this prelims you must have read this burso guys because this is mentioned in your sixth class ncrd i'll be showing you the map right burzo you study as a neolithic site ganeshwar also you study it in the this stone age only so easily you could have eliminated a lot of students might like they at this point of time they were not knowing what to mark what not to they were not able to get into the topic that from where it has been asked a lot of students have like taken it from the art and culture perspective that art and culture uh, question is there though we can put it by this chandra ketu but but from the prehistoric times knowledge of your topic you can solve this and again how questions can be asked in the form of like which of the following is not a paleolithic site or which of the following is not a neolithic site they can ask you four options they will be given okay so let us move ahead <clears throat> and understand this prehistoric you are understanding the importance of prehistoric times prehistoric times guys prehistoric times again first of all i always start it with the timeline now the timeline is being started from where you will this is your weapon guys timeline is your crucial weapon for history be it ancient medieval or modern okay so from where you will be starting this prehistoric times i'll be saying you to keep this bar as 20 lakh bc you can also say that 2 million bce i hope your concept of this easy concept of bce is clear b 
we take the birth of Jesus Christ as zero, right? And when we will move ahead in history, we will be terming it as Anno Domini. We will be moving behind in history, we will be saying it as before Christ. <laughs> I hope you are understanding this. This knowledge is clear. So if, if I am asking you, see, we move in history like this only. So if I'm asking you that what time period is 6th century BC, can you open it up like which of the centuries will be coming up? And if I ask you what is the time period of 6th century AD, can you tell me guys? 6th century BC, 6th century AD. 6th century BC is 600 to 500 or 600 to 700 BC or or your 500 to 600 BC. What is the correct sequence of it? And 6th century AD is your 600 to 700 AD or your 600 to 500 AD or your 500 to 600 AD. Which is the correct timeline? Because UPSC directly asks you that this was happening in 6th century. Though we also know that UPSC will never ask you question on this that 6th century BC and then they will be giving you poor option. They are thinking that you are already well aware with this particular information. This is ingrained in you. But I know a lot of students will fail to answer me this. What is the difference between? Guys, when we move ahead in 6th century BC or when we move ahead in BCE, before Christ timeline, you must understand that we come from 600 to 500, then 400, then 300, then 0. But as we were moving ahead in AD, you understand that we are moving from 100 to 200 to 300 to 2023, understanding. So when I'm saying 6th century BC, you must understand that we are talking about 600 to 500 BC. Not this, not this. And if I am saying you the first quarter of 8th century BC, I have already told you in the orientation class, that when they are saying first quarter of 6th century BC means quarter they are talking about means 600 to 585 they are topping or 585 their uh, initial first years of 600 to 25 years right and 6th century AD means now we are moving ahead in AD so 600 to 700 AD <coughs> or sorry over here you will understand that 500 to 600 AD this is what misconception happened this will not be there this will not 500 to 600 will be your 6th century AD 600 to 500 will be your 6th century BC. I hope this funda is clear. Again, if I am asking you 7th century BC and 7th century AD, can you answer me? I hope you can answer me, guys. So this funda should be clear. Chinka nahi hai, you first, dekho, a lot of students will face difficulties even in very, very silly things. But first of all, you accept that, okay, I was not knowing it. Then only you will be improving. Then only you will be giving your 100% attention. Right? So we are starting this 2 million BC, prehistoric times will go on from here to 1000 BC. We will be dividing it in this particular 1000 BC. And prehistoric time, we will be understanding prehistoric time in certain topics and these topics are basically your <laughs> Or you can say age, Paleolithic age, Paleolithic age, Mesolithic age, Neolithic age, Chalcolithic age, and your Megalithic age. This whole comes under your stone age too. Because again, lithic, lithic, lithic you are seeing over here. Lithic means stone. Paleo means old. Meso means middle one. Neo means new. New stone, old, middle stone or a transition phase you will be seeing. Paleolithic, old stone, chalcolithic, copper stone, megalithic, large stone. Understanding? So this thing you have to understand under prehistoric times guys. <coughs> Now, before understanding or before dwelling into uh, under these topics, you must all be knowing, first of all, the timeline should be fixed. 
I always focus upon the timeline. So Paleolithic age, you will be studying it from 20 lakh BC. Or as per the scientist, or as per the historians, geologists, these are every in every book you will be seeing certain different timelines. But I want you to make it fixed so that in the time of your examination you can remember it. Right? Right now, what you are feeling? You are feeling that we cannot remember the timeline exactly because you are not keeping them fixed. <clears throat> so these timelines we have to keep it fixed for our convenience. I am not saying that historians are not debatable. These timelines will always be debatable. We are talking about the inferences that this might have happened. Might, might, would you will be used in prehistoric times. So 20 lakh BCE to 10,000 BCE. We will be keeping it for the Paleolithic age. That Paleolithic age was going on in this period. Then from 10,000 BCE to Mesolithic age will be going on till 6,000 BCE. Keep this timeline fixed guys. With 4000 BC, Mesolithic, a transition phase will be coming. What was happening in this, how, how human evolution was happening, we will be understanding. And what to remember from this particular prehistoric times, I will be telling you. Then from pre Mesolithic to Neolithic, you will be seeing that Neolithic, from Mesolithic, uh, sorry, from Neolithic timeline will be <coughs> your 6000 to 1000 BC. Understanding that means Neolithic also will be going to your 1000 BC, 6000 to 1000. Chalcolithic you will be finding again. Chalcolithic time period will be different, guys. So <laughs> first of all, you should be knowing. We should be knowing about these timelines. Again, I'll be telling you the different way. That history has been started, and history from 20 lakh BC to 10,000 BC. This is your Paleolithic. Then from 10k to 6k means 6000 BC. This is your Mesolithic. Then 6k to 1k, 1000 BC. This is your Neolithic. Now in textbooks, somewhere you will be finding that Neolithic started from 8000. Somewhere Mesolithic you will be finding it started from 9000. It doesn't matter. You have to understand that you have to keep this timeline fixed so that you can move in this timeline clearly. Right? It doesn't matter how much time Neolithic sharp differences are not there. Okay? Just wait. Oh, the whole uh, slide got erased. I'm really sorry. We'll be making it again. <coughs> so we were understanding Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, uh, your Chalcolithic, your uh, Megalithic. Before understanding them, I was telling you, you have to have the timeline at least. And we will be revising timelines itself in the class. 20 lakh to 10,000, who this Paleolithic was going on? 10,000 to of uh, 6000 Mesolithic, 6000 to 1000 Neolithic. Chalcolithic, you start from 3500, means 3.5k, 3500 BC to 1000 BC Chalcolithic. Megalithic, you start from 2500 to your <coughs> 100 AD. It will go in the ADs to 100 AD. Don't worry about this timeline. We will be revising it in n number of times. You will be remembering it in the class itself. But what I want, you have to see that we are keeping it fixed. Okay? In the last lecture, when we will be completing South Indian Kingdoms in lecture number 10 to, we will be revising the same timeline. So this timeline should be fixed, guys. So how we have divided this whole ages, how we have this stone age, we have divided, how we are doing it, guys. That we are dividing it under Meso, Paleo, uh, Paleo, Meso, Neo, Chalco, Megalithic. We are basically dividing or the historians have divided it in on the basis of the tools which we have found, stone tools, and also on the basis of the climate change which was happening. Right? In a Paleolithic period, you are seeing that from 20 lakh to 10,000. That means you are understanding that this whole Paleolithic age was existing in which epoch, if I ask you. It was in Pleistocene epoch and after Pleistocene epoch, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chalcolithic is in Holocene epoch. You must understand this, right? And on the basis of stone tools and climate change, we have divided it. So you must all be knowing that what is the difference 
on, on the basis of these tools also you will be understanding that throughout history humans will be developing they will be coming acquainted with the uh, you will say fire they will be coming acquainted with the agriculture domestication of animals then they will be making villages right certain slowly and slowly they will be developing <laughs> this you all might be knowing but question never comes from here in this part guys right let us understand the differences first if i ask you the major stone age that is paleolithic paleolithic and your neolithic so difference is based upon their first of all the tools which they were using na right? So first of all, you try to answer me what type of tools Paleolithic people were using. Paleolithic people were using your <coughs> burish or unpolished tools. Right, unpolished tools were being utilized over here. Hand axes, you will not be seeing that much polished rough surface or basically you will be seeing primitive type of tools of uh, the stone tools you will be seeing here right also in a mesolithic period what were the type of tools which were the peculiar feature of mesolithic period so mesolithic is also understood as transitional phase so it is not like that some places will be some of the features of paleolithic will be in mesolithic too and some feature of the advancement of in the mesolithic you will be seeing and the temperature climate change was getting warmer and warmer the climate was getting warmer to warmer as we are proceeding the tools aapko pata hai, they were Burish and unpolished tools they were using. Mesolithic, you were utilizing one very special type of tool, microliths. Small, small micro tools they were found in these Mesolithic sites. Now, Mesolithic sites we have to understand, right? This was the peculiar feature of this Mesolithic period, guys. Mesolithic age. And in this particular Neolithic times, you will be finding that we are now having polished tools. Polished tools. Every tool was very well made. Uh, for hunting for other agriculture purposes right so you will be seeing that the tools were changing like this. also if i say when tools were like this then how was their uh, what was their occupation if i ask you paleolithic people when homo sapiens were emerging when the homo erectus were there what were their uh, like occupation they were basically what hunter and gatherers Ra? hunters and gatherers what they were equipped with the agricultural knowledge no guys <coughs> they were hunting and gathering mesolithic period what occupation the humans developed you will be seeing that they started a primitive agriculture they started domestication of animals in Mesolithic period, you will be seeing these developed. Domestication of animals. Primitive agriculture. You will be and in which site you will find all this, I'll be telling you. Right now, just understand it simple. And in Neolithic times, you will be saying that agriculture will become their occupation now. Domestication will also be there. Right. Other, they will be utilizing uh, industries in the form of like tool industries you will be finding over here because now they are well equipped with the knowledge of polishing the tools <laughs> if i ask you that what was the habitation how they were living you will be saying when they were hundred hunters and gatherers that means they are not living at a settled place so they are keep on moving so you will be finding they are living in cave shelters they will be living as in caves they will be living in like <coughs> you can say they were basically cavemen and moving from one place to another cave shelters stone shelters they will be having not permanent settlements right? but as we are understanding primitive agriculture or we are understanding or we are having developing the habit of or we are getting acquainted with agricultural products now we are started getting set, settled so you will be seeing semi sedentary lifestyle semi sedentary means for certain times they will be staying at one place 
then they were utilizing this slash and burn so they will be going to other place so semi sedentary type of lifestyle they were following and neolithic people you will be finding settled villages now village formation you will have started seeing mud houses you will be started seeing stone houses you will be started seeing stone houses will emerge in this mesolithic prime period also over here mud settlement stone settlement you will be started seeing in this in this particular period you have you will not be getting any type of script script was not there script if they will be talking about there was no script there was pictographic elements which you will be finding in your art and culture class you will be seeing that there were pictures and all they denote they denoted it by that right that's why this particular comes under prehistoric because we are not knowing any script we are, we don't have any script of uh, this particular period understanding guys so this particular information which you are seeing also simultaneously you will be seeing that humans as a species was also evolving <clears throat> fire was being uh, identified but this type of question will never be asked that when fire was being discovered right paleolithic time only fire was being discovered guys by the paleolithic human also you understand that in the textbooks paleolithic period is divided into certain three ages also three periods like upper paleolithic middle paleolithic lower paleolithic i will say it doesn't matter guys don't remember the timelines of here upper middle lower value just understand that the tools change their shape the unpolished tools change their shape that's why they are dividing it into upper middle and lower value certain tools also you will be finding like scrapers burins no need to go into the details of it where you have to put your time it is very important otherwise there is vast things which you have to read and focus but focus should only in the exam oriented manner now question will never be asked from here guys <coughs> from this topic which we have understood question will never be asked from <coughs> then from where question will be asking question because this particular information will be known to 99% of the student even if they will form question on the basis of this particular knowledge everyone would be able to eliminate so questions will be coming on from your site based knowledge that what are the mesolithic site what are the neolithic site what are the paleolithic like this questions will the hojili hading is present where what are the northeastern sites like this questions will also you understand that humans were advancing like this paleolithic mesolithic neolithic and you don't see that the entire india entire pocket of this india was changing from paleolithic to mesolithic to neolithic no you must understand that there were certain pockets which were developing <laughs> for example today also if you compare delhi or any metropolitan city from 100 years before so everyone was like these were not the metropolitan city they are changed within 100 years right and throughout history you are seeing that the urban centers are there smart city concept has come but are there any pockets which have not developed or they are following the same lifestyle as 10000 years ago prehistoric times yes those pockets are tribal areas which we consider considered under pvtgs that means they are still following this hunting gathering this shifting cultivation that means when why i am telling you this that every pocket of india was not advancing like paleolithic to mesolithic to neolithic when we are in neolithic period you must understand that certain pockets will be practicing paleolithic culture mesolithic culture right major center will be shifting like for example in belan valley in in a, your bhim betka you will be seeing the shift that from paleo people have moved on to neo people will be moving on to now iron age when iron was found so like that growth will not be same for all people in india that's why some of the sites you see in paleolithic also mesolithic also neolithic also hai na <coughs> so you must be understanding this paleolithic mesolithic neolithic again paleolithic from 20 lakh bce are you feeling like 20 lakh 2 million uh, years ago to 10000 years ago we are having this paleolithic period then from 10000 to 6000 we are having this meso period is existence and from 6000 to 1000 we are having neolithic in some parts you will be seeing that neolithic was existing till 4000 why i am writing 1000 because 1000 also certain in certain place neolithic culture was being that's why don't go into the uh like nuances of it just understand it as it is guys take it as it is right 
Now similar culture as, as we have advanced Neolithic culture, similar culture was of Chalcolithic too, which I'll be telling you. Okay. But before understanding Chalcolithic and uh, Megalithic, you must understand the sites of Paleolithic and Mesolithic. <clears throat> because now sites becomes important. Paleolithic. Sites in it. This is our beautiful earth. Over here, what are the Paleolithic sites which I ask you guys? Try to note down, try to write rough sites and see whether these sites I am writing or not. So first site you will understand in your art and culture class also that Bhim Betka is a very important site. This is your Paleolithic site. It does not mean that this is your Mesolithic, this is not your Mesolithic site, this is not your Neolithic site. This is also your uh, other sites so there. Overlapping will be there, but don't understand it from overlapping perspective. You have to solve the prelims guys. Prelims will be solved only when you have crystal clear knowledge. Right, so Bhim Betka, you understand it is in present day MP, right, Madhya Pradesh state. Bhim Betka, you will find over there. In Karnataka, you will be finding Hunski. This is your Hunski in Karnataka. In one more site in Andhra Pradesh, you will be finding that is Kurnool. Kurnool caves you will be finding in your Andhra Pradesh region. You will be finding this site Kurnool. Over here you will be finding bone tools were found. Also now these type of findings will not be asked. See, understand. You don't have to understand in the depth of these sites. Where you have to understand the depth of these sites? In the IVC sites. Like what you have found in Lothal, what you have found in Dholavira. Waste your time over there. Not to understand that what we have found in Paleolithic site of Kurnool. No. Only word is important from here, right? And also one more site you take that is Patne, which is in present day Maharashtra. So these are the sites, Paleolithic sites. Where from where I am telling you, there are n number of ten sites will be written in your book also, guys. Check out uh, check out our prelims crash course books, or if you have got the books which we have released for prelims over here, there you will be finding more sites. But you don't have to understand or you don't have to keep these all sites on your tips, right? I am just giving you these four types, four sites. Why I am giving you, I will be telling you later. From where I am giving you, I will be telling you that too. And why I am stressing upon these sites, I will be telling you telling you that too, right? Don't worry about that. But these are your Paleolithic, Paleolithic site. Patne, Hunsky, Kurnul, Bimbetka. Come to, <coughs> just wait guys. Come to now Mesolithic sites. Understand guys, the information over here is very easy to understand. 99% of the people will be knowing. But the information which now I am telling you, not everyone will be having hold over these things, right? Because these needs your rectification aspect also, your recall method also. So be active in this particular aspect. See, I can easily, I am all doing it for you. I can easily show you, show you on the map and just circle it out. That these are the sites you have to remember. I am doing this exercise only for you guys. So please appreciate this and be 100% over here guys. So Mesolithic sites you will find. First of all Adamgad in MP. Near Bhimbetka only you will finding this sites Adamgad. Name is important. See the, how they have asked question. Then they can easily. So apart from this Burzon. They can easily ask you Adamgad. Daujali Hading. Uh, Nellor. How you will answer it, right? So they are not asking anything about Burzo, what was in Burzo, what was happening in Burzo. Understand that way, guys. Mesolithic uh, sites we are uh, seeing, you know that we have Adamgad. This is in present day MP. Over here in MP district. Then in Gujarat also you will be finding Mesolithic site, that is Lan Ganj. In Gujarat, present day Gujarat. In Rajasthan, you will be finding one Mesolithic site that is your Bagor. And take one more site from West Bengal, and this is your Bir Bhanpur. West Bengal. 
no need to understand that what we have found in this particular site no need to understand somewhere you will be finding bone tools somewhere you will be finding stone tools and the type of stone tools like microliths scrappers burins no need to understand right in adamgarh you will be understanding that for the first time you have seen the domestication of animals evidence you will be seeing over here. in adamgarh but right now my objective is to have you uh, well acquainted with these names adamgarh birbanpur bagor lander don't worry about this so these four sites you have to remember of me come to the neolithic site guys very important very very important neolithic i hope you are making the running notes the neolithic sites neolithic sites are well uh, written or well represented in the maps of your ncert2 right so in the north india in north india if they will be asking that what are the neolithic sites which are present in north so you will be asking saying me hey guys first of all let me write it neolithic sites so neolithic sites in the north are burzo and gufkara in kashmir you will be finding burzo and gufkara now in your ncrts about this burjon it is written that over here you will be finding peculiar type of housing guys pit dwelling houses houses you will be finding over here pit dwelling house pit dwelling houses means if this is your ground this is your surface what they will do they will dug out this ground and make stairs from here and they will be living their life over here under the pits guys they will be living like this right what was their primary occupation overall in the all neolithic sites you will be seeing a primary occupation was agriculture because now they are becoming well acquainted with agriculture their lifestyle help become sedentary settled but over here birzo is an exception an exception is that over here you will be find they will be practicing not agriculture as their primary occupation but hunting and fishing guys because over here fish hooks we have found so hunting and fishing was going on over here as a primary occupation though some of the people were practicing agriculture in here in birzo you will be seeing in that in their graves in their uh, like wherever in their burials it was seen that how do we get to know about the evidence of domestication of animals that some of the animals were buried with the you along with humans like a dog evidence has been found that dog was buried with his master that means we have understood that okay Uh, that domestication of animals was there though it has been started from mesolithic times why i am telling you this detail because this is written in ncert guys and i am focusing upon ncert much more okay so you don't worry about any other standard sources now if you are following this crash course 100% i will be telling you that you will be in the best position to attempt these questions again upsc is very very risky guys the questions are very difficult very peculiar very strange so i will not be saying that as it is question is going to come but i am saying that you are the best aspirant to attempt this question if you don't know this understand that 100% of the other aspirants also don't know this type of confidence will come into you okay yeah, so burzo so two sides you have understood of north india then we come into the eastern india guys eastern india you will be finding one side that is your in assam you will be finding this side that is daujali hadi question can also be in the statement form that in northeastern india we don't find any north neolithic site this is wrong right daujeling hadding is in us then in the eastern india you will be finding your sites like over here you will be finding in bihar you will be finding tiran in bihar you will be finding chiran Tirand, you can say the way you want. This is in B, present day. Over here, you will be finding in UP region, Kodilva. In 
in UP region. Now come to the southern Indian, <laughs> southern Indian sites, guys. In southern Indian, you will be seeing Maski over here, Maski. This is also an important Ashokan site, but right now you understand it from the Neolithic type point of view. Maski you will find over here, guys, in Karnataka. In Karnataka, you will be finding Hallur. Right? Over here, you come in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu region, you will be seeing one site. You will find in Tamil Nadu the site named as Payampalli, guys. Right, so these are the sites which you have to keep. Now, why <coughs> I am making stress on these sites only? Why? What is the reason? Because this particular sites are written or are present in your sixth class NCRT. Let me show you the map now. See this particular map, guys. The only map or the only book in which Burzo is mentioned is here only, guys. That Burzo is mentioned in the NCRTs. Though in other other books, in different different books, you will be finding it. But the standard sources, why NCRTs are being stressed upon? This is because because of this only. That from here, if you are understanding in a very right way, no need to go for n number of sources, right? So over here now you will realize all this Paleolithic site, Mesolithic, Mesolithic. You have got into your hand, guys, or not it got into your hand, but at least you are well familiar with them. See this Burzo. This particular Gufkaral also is not mentioned, but Gufkaral is nearby only. Over here in Pakistan, you will find one site, Mehargad, is also Neolithic. Add this, guys. You will be finding Chiran, Kodilva, and Mahagara also you add. Mahagara. Daujali, I think you, I have told you. Hallur, I have told you. Payampalli, I have told you. Right? What about the sites of Paleolithic? I have told you Bhimbetka. Konsagi, Kurnul, and one more site I have told you that over here, Patne in Maharashtra also. Over here, Mesolithic sites are not mentioned, but Mesolithic sites, if I ask you, can you tell me? Again, last time I am making you revise all these sites, then you have to revise on your own too, right? <coughs> Over here, if I ask you the Mesolithic sites, revise only these sites, guys. Adamgad, Lalganj, Bagor, Birbanpur. Mesolithic sites. What are the Neolithic sites? Gufkaral, uh, Burzo, Mehargad. In UP region, Odilva, Mahagara. And in Bihar region, Chiran. In Northeast region, Daujali Hadi. In Karnataka, Hallur. Payampalli in Tamil Nadu. If I ask you about the Paleolithic site, over here Bhimbetka, over here Hunski, Karnataka, over here Kurnul and Patne. Revise it again guys, again draw until you get all the sites which we have studied. Apart from that, if you study all, if you want to study, if you want to have all the names which are given in your any book, you can do it. But I am vouching for these because these are mentioned somewhere for NC. Right? So this you have understood that how we are moving. <laughs> now in your parallelly in your uh, art and culture class, when you will be seeing the art and culture class, okay, that will be taken by your other teacher. You will be understanding the it from the art and culture perspective, like the paintings which have been found. Like this, you will be seeing the Meliolithic art over here, over there in your art and culture class. You will be seeing all of this. Okay. Now you understand that these type of chopping tool, pebble, hand axe. These are the Paleolithic tools of lower Paleolithic, but don't go into this much peculiarity. Just understand that these these were the type of tools. Also, I have told you that Paleolithic, then Mesolithic, then Neolithic, how you will move forward. In somewhere 5 lakh will be written, but I told you to remember 20 lakh. So you will be remembering like that, guys. Or otherwise, you make your own timeline or you take my advice, right? 20 lakh, 10,000, 10,000 to 6,000, 6,000 onwards, you will get Neolithic. So this we have discussed. These are the feature of Meolithic, Paleolithic age, like Pleistocene period. It was mostly the Ice Age. You will be finding that the whole Paleolithic age was everywhere in India, except the alluvial plains of Indus and Ganga. 
because over there you will be seeing dense forest and those were cleared after the advent of Aryans. You will be seeing this. There was no knowledge of agriculture, house building, pottery, any metal because they were basically hunters and gatherers. Okay, that's why they were saying the hunters and gatherers. So they used to live in rock shelters, cave shelters, right? They were using unpolished, undressed rough stones, right? Now I have also told you that Paleolithic, you will see this PPT and you will understand that it is divided between lower, middle, late. No need to go into the sites which are written on of early, lower or late, right? Just understand that we have understood Paleolithic four sites you have to remember. This we have seen Kurnul Caves, Hunski, Himbetka, Patne. Now Mesolithic age will be coming and over here this is a trans transitional phase. You will be seeing the microliths as a unique feature over here. The lifestyle has gone from <laughs> some of the people will be experiencing hunting and gathering, but some people will go into the primitive agriculture. Also, domestication of animals will be started, right? And stone type type of tools will be changing like this. Now, these are the microlith tools. No need to remember what are lunettes, bladelets, serrated bladelet. No, but understand that this was also used to be there. Like these were harpoons. Anna? Over here, sites you have known. This is the difficult part which most of the people leave. And you also tell me honestly that do you in the last attempts have you remembered all this? No, you must not have. Right? So you know Bagar, Adamgod, Langanj, Adam, Adamgad, Lalganj, uh, Birbanpur. This we have remembered. In the old NCRT, you will see this map, guys. And there are n number of sites which are mentioned. Now it is up to you whether you have to remember what I have told you or you have to remember all these things. No need to remember everything. Yeah. In your art and culture class, you will be seeing these Mesolithic arts and all. When you will see Neolithic, Neolithic age, see the time period which I have told you, only that time period you try to remember, guys. Leave every other time period which is written anywhere. Right? So over here, you will be seeing food production has been increased now. If food production has been increased, we will be utilizing pottery. So pottery making also you will be seeing over here. Technology improved, that means stone making also improved. That means polished stone tools are now being made over here. Different tools are being highlighted. Now students will dwell upon these tools also that some of the students will focus more on these tools too. This is where they go wrong. This is where they feel that they are understanding, they are getting knowledgeable, but not from the UPSC oriented way. You will get knowledgeable, but you will not be able to clear from them, right? So over here, emergence of self-sufficient village communities, you will be seeing question will never come from these silly topics, this civilly information, because this type of things, everybody will be knowing. I hope you are understanding. Then we have seen the Neolithic sites, Burzon, Gofkaral in Karnataka, Maski, Brahmgiri, Hallur, Kodegal, Bodihal, Kodilva, uh, over here, Payyampalli, I have told you, Chirand in Bihar, I have told you. So whatever is written, now you must be understanding that, they go a simple tarika tha, the method which I could have tell you is simply going through these slides and marked it over here that this is your uh, sites. You will never have, you will never have understood guys. And uh, like if you feel like that, <clears throat> you will have never gotten it. But right now, every word which we have written, you must have understood, right? This is your map which is added over here to see the PPT also. Now we will be moving ahead and we are left with two periods too. Those are your Chalcolithic and Megalithic. So first of all, let me take Chalcolithic. Chalcolithic. Now, as you know, that we have learned that it has started somewhere from 3500 BC to it has gone till 1000 BC. Now, again, I'm telling you, this is not fixed, but we have make it fixed so that we can remember it whenever we want. So 35,000 BC Chalcolithic period has started and what was so unique about this period? You are seeing that certain people in our Bharat was at that point of time was what was Paleolithic. Somewhere you will be seeing Mesolithic. Somewhere you will be seeing the Neolithic settlements have come like in Burzon, Gufkaral, in your UP area, in your Northeast area. So these settlements were getting advanced. Now one more settlement came Nearby in Rajasthan, in Madhya Pradesh, in Western Maharashtra, near the copper mines it has come that they were now able to utilize stones with copper. So the first metal which was found was chalco. Chalco means copper. 
what was so unique about this period that we have made it it in a different timeline that is they were able to utilize copper with stone that's why we are saying them chalcolithic also the same features you will be seeing that agriculture primitive agriculture they were practicing you will be seeing that settlements mud settlements were there mud villages were there rooms were there or houses were made made from or uh, you can say thatched thatched houses means from mud and leaves and all that houses were made not advanced cities you will see in chalcolithic it was a rural society basically you will be seeing industries in terms of tools tools was of neolithic only so this type of people also came certain in certain areas. Again, I am saying different, different areas, different, different people are coming. You will also see in the next class when I'll be telling you during this 3500 to 1000 BC, certain people will be near the Indus. You will be seeing certain people will be emerge and they will be able to utilize this copper with. They will be able to utilize copper with a 10 and they will be forming the bronze civilization that means they will be able to make bronze okay so there were certain other people in different time in different space so in the same time period like you will be seeing the indus valley was also indus valley bronze civilization was existing advanced people were come over there so in ibc we will be discussing about that but like that you have to think that everyone is existing somewhere and human advancement is also taking place that's why today you are seeing that in Andaman and Nikomar, Sentinelis are there practicing their hunting and gathering. But over here in Delhi, we are thinking about smart cities concept. Okay, so parallelly things are not moving in the same timeline. Right? But you have to understand it. Now these things are happening. Also, Chalcolithic sites become very important. When Chalcolithic sites are the things which you have to understand. And from where we have found these sites, we have termed it as the culture. For example, in Rajasthan region, you will be finding the Ahar culture. Means over here, you will be finding this Ahar site and one more site that is Kilunt. And these both sites are present in Rajasthan. Right? In the Madhya Pradesh region, you will be finding Kayat, Iran. And this is your Malwa culture basically. Ayat, Iran. In the Maharashtra region, you will be finding Daimamat, Inamgaon, and one more side, Chorwe. That's why the Maharashtrian culture, we say it as Chorwe culture. Chorve culture, we say. Again, you have to remember. Let me show you in the map, guys. <laughs> the Chalcolithic period features you will see over here. Simple, nobody will ask you question on this. But you have to know that they were the first people to use this copper. And in this period only, you will be seeing in the next class, IBC people came. Okay, they were not accounted with burnt bricks, but they were utilizing these potteries. Black and red pottery was famous over here in Chalcolithic time period. Right, they were domestication was there. And these are the these are several sites which are mentioned in your old and chatty, not in new. But over here, I have told you to remember Daimabad, Jorve, Inamga, Ahar, Hilund. Over here, Ganeshwar also you try to remember, guys. Ganeshwar. And this has appeared in your prelims. From here only, from the mapping only, they have come. Site based question. Iran, Kayat, and Navadatuli also you try to remember. Iran, Kayat, Navadatuli, Daimabad, Jorve, Namgao, Ganeshwar, Gilund, Ahar. From Rajasthan, three sites. From MP, three sites. From Maharashtra, three sites. You remember. In your NCRT or in the Tamil Nadu NCRT, you will find these Pandu Raja Tippi also. If you want to remember, remember, otherwise you can leave it. But this is also coming. Chiranj is also mentioned in the Chalcolithic. Again, I am telling you certain sites will repeat. You don't have to focus upon that. Them, right? So you understand that it, you cannot say, simply say that Chiranj is not your Paleolithic site. It, it is only Neolithic site. No. It has been, must have been the Neo Paleolithic. Then it have moved to uh, Mizo, Neo. Now it, has, it is also moving advancement to the Chalcolithic. 
ठीक है तो इस हिसाब से नहीं समझना आपको यू डोंट हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड थिंग्स इन दिस वे ठीक है सो दिस इज योर दीज आर योर चालकोलिथिक्स नेक्स्ट कम योर मेगालिथिक साइट्स और मेगालिथिक पीरियड अगेन लेट मी टेल यू मेगालिथिक पीरियड वॉज सच पीरियड वेयर वॉज द यूनिक पीरियड मेगालिथिक दो वी आर सेइंग दैट दिस इज अ लिथ लिथिक पीरियड मीन्स स्टोन पीरियड बिग बिग स्टोन यू विल फाइंड बट हेयर ऑल्सो वी विल फाइंड सम ऑफ द आयरन इम्प्लीमेंट्स टू दिस इज द एक्सेप्शन ऑफ दिस पीरियड गाइज समवेयर यू विल बी फाइंडिंग दिस आयरन इम्प्लीमेंट ठीक है आफ्टर थाउ दैट्स वाई वी आर सेइंग दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर मेगालिथिक पीरियड वॉज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड बी सी टू टू हंड्रेड ए डी इट वेंट ऑन टू ए डी एंड आयरन बेसिकली वी फाउंड आफ्टर थाउजेंड बी सी So don't get confused, right? And megalithic period, most of the sites we were seeing in the southern Indian, uh, southern Indian part. So we have certain sites which we are founding megaliths in northeastern also in the entire country. But most of the sites we have found in the southern Indian part. Over here, you will be finding that these megaliths were famous for first their own type of Stone type means big big stones they were using. Also, they was famous for their burials. That the type of burials they were doing, very famous. And this must be confusing. Now this is very important, guys. You have to understand this burials names terminology, and you must be confused also. These burials were in the three forms. Like if it is chambered. Chambered means. Well boxed like this, boxed from all sides. These burials, if it is chambered, from covered from all side, we are saying chambered. If it is unchambered also, means it is not covered from all side. This we will say unchambered. And no, these are of two types. And stone types means megalithic period. You will be finding the arrangement of certain stone. That over here arrangement was done in certain form. this feature also you will be seeing like stones will be erected like this i'll be showing you the pictures like this ha now if this burials are chambered and it is underground we will call it pit type of burial pit type of burial if it is not underground or it is half underground and half above the surface we will call it or not pit sorry guys over here if it is underground below the ground we have kept it under the chamber we will call it as cist and if it is half under the ground half above we will call it semi dolmenoid cyst and if it is above the ground we will call it as dolmen what do you understand by it that the burials they were used to do they used to place these stones in such a way that it will form a chamber like structure i'll be showing you in an image too don't worry now if this burial in the stone like structure you have found it underground we will be calling it cyst half underground half surface we will be calling it semi dolmenoid cyst under and above the surface if we have got it we will call, calling it dolmen and it will always have a entrance gate in the form of rectangle square or circle right doesn't matter <laughs> unchambered means these are not covered these type of burials we were having if it is underground we were having at pit pit unchambered burials right and second type of we are having oon bale oon what is oon it is a like this type of thing you will be seeing oons are pottery type of thing which are made of terracotta these are not of stones so these are of terracotta material everybody else where pits dolmen you are seeing these are stone types right so over here i'll be showing you two guys stone so these type of features you will be finding in megalithic period let me show you see this type of burial was your oon burial ठीक है ऊन बिकॉज ओवर हेयर इन दिस पॉट यू विल बी सींग दैट पीपल वर यूज टू बी बरीड लाइक दिस ठीक है देखो दिस टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर इज योर डोलमेन ओवर हेयर इट इज चेम्बर्ड एंड ओवर हेयर यू विल बी सींग दैट एंट्रेंस डोलमेन इफ इट इज अंडरग्राउंड यू आर सींग द लार्ज बोल्डर्स लाइक दिस दिस इज योर सिस्ट है ना इन केरला यू कॉल दिस टाइप ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर एज टोपी काल so all this terminology how questions will be coming topical dolmen cyst 
वर रिलेटेड टू विच पीरियड मॉडर्न पीरियड हर्षा पीरियड पीलियोलिथिक पीरियड और योर मेगालिथिक पीरियड लाइक दिस क्वेश्चन कैन कम वन मोर टर्मिनोलॉजी इज देयर मेनहीर मेनहीर इज द अरेंजमेंट ऑफ स्टोन वेयर वन स्टोन विल बी इरेक्टेड लाइक दिस वन सिंगल स्टोन यू विल राइट माइड बी देयर विल बी अ ग्रेव यार्ड और समवन विल बी बरीड ओवर हेयर बट ओनली वन स्टोन यू विल बी सी दिस इज इन मणिपुर इन तमिलनाडु और इन केरला यू विल बी सींग इट एज अ हीरो स्टोन राइट लेट मी शो यू लाइक सी दिस ऊन टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स आई हैव टोल्ड यू ऑलरेडी दिस टाइप ऑफ पॉटरी यू हैव फाउंड इन मेगालिथिक पीरियड तो दीज आर द फीचर ऑफ मेगालिथिक पीरियड गाइस नाउ व्हाट आर द मेजर मेगालिथिक साइट्स यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड देयर आर ओनली टू साइट्स व्हिच आर मेंशनड इन द एनसीईआरटी आई विल गिव यू थ्री ओके वन मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट साइट इज आदि न चनलूर और इट इज आदि चनलूर आई एम सॉरी इफ आई एम प्रोनंशिएटिंग इट इन अ रॉन्ग वे आदि चनलूर present day tamil nadu in tamil nadu only you will get one more that is kodu manal and over here one more site in your karnataka you will be getting brahmagiri as your megalithics let me show you. see over here guys in green they have mentioned megalithic site adi chanalur and brahmagiri they have mentioned i have told you kodu manal also right so these three sites are of megalithic understand it guys right so now i hope you have scientifically understood this particular topic prehistoric time let us see what all we have seen in this particular time. so we have constructed our timeline now you will be seeing that we have started this is our weapon guys 12 lakh bce to 10000 bce you have seen it in the form of paleolithic features you know nobody will ask question on features sites you know question from sites will be 10000 To six thousand, it is your Mesolithic. Again, features and sites. You can you tell me the sites? Try to revise. Pause the video and try to remember what you have understood. Six thousand to one thousand, or mark it over here. One. You have understood it as Neolithic. Period. Right. After Neolithic, you have we understood Chalcolithic period. In Chalcolithic period, you have understood from thirty five hundred to thousand BC. Or you can simply mark over here also thirty five hundred to thousand. Doesn't matter. This is your Chalcolithic. And over here, from Chalcolithic to from twenty five hundred. To two hundred, mark it as two hundred eighty. To two hundred eighty, from twenty five hundred to two hundred eighty, this is your megalithic. So this is your twenty five hundred mark it over here. Twenty five hundred to two hundred eighty, this is your megalithic. Very neatly and very easily, you have got this timeline. You have got the features of these areas. and now in a real sense you have got the hold of these particular sites <clears throat> and this is what your pre let me know that have you seen this particular prehistoric times from this lens before if you feel that your knowledge has been enriched who appreciated guys do let me know thank you so much i'll be meeting you in the next class next class you must come before revising it okay then only come otherwise don't come okay yeah. i am telling you like this we will be moving and you will not be even knowing that how we have have the hold of this topic, which has been very difficult throughout these right thank you so much guys take care of yourself i'll meet you in the next session